kinds of risotto, two different kinds of gnocchi. Um, they're things that people make in the restaurants a lot. Not a lot of home cooks make them. They think they're challenging. They're not as difficult as people make them out to be. It's, it's like she said, it's more technique driven than it is recipe driven. In restaurants, we don't use recipes. I, I have a recipe book downstairs, but it's general guideline for what we do. It's more about technique, we use a lot of ratios, but we mostly in restaurants cook from feel and how things look and how things taste and, you know, um, McDonald's, you want everything to taste the same every time you go. In a restaurant, it, it, it doesn't always work that way. It depends maybe on who's working that night or who did that kind of prep work or, you know. So while, I, while we do have recipes in front of us, I want to show you you know, what we look for in the restaurant as far as, you know, when we're rolling the gnocchi, what we want the dough to look like. Because we can work straight from a recipe, but it won't always come out the same. So it's more important to teach you, you know, guidelines along the way. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about a broth. It's called brodo. Um, brodo literally means broth in Italian. Now, it's basically a vegetable stock that's been, we're going to thicken it and flavor it with cheese rinds and we're going to cook pasta in it for the starch. Um, Brodo is a good substitute for, say, a chicken stock or you know any kind of meat-based stock, but this is vegetarian. It's not completely vegan, but it's vegetarian. So, um, so if you're going to make some kind of soup that calls for chicken stock, Brodo would be an, an appropriate um, substitution for that. Um, so basically up here in this pot up here, I've taking the liberty before you all got here of uh, basically just rough, rough chopping some, some carrots, some celery, and some onion, adding some water to it, some herb stems left over from chopping herbs, which you know we all do when we're you know, kind of making dinner at home. Basically what this, you can make this stock yours. You know, just because I give you some things to put in it, you know, the rough guidelines are gonna be water, pasta, and the mirepoix, which is carrot, celery, and onion. Um, after that, you know, you can flavor it how you would like to flavor it along the way. I kind of call it a scrap stock because, you know, especially downstairs, what we do is we take all of our scrap vegetables, our cheese rinds, leftover dried pasta that we maybe we don't have enough to, you know, maybe make a soup out of or something like that and a way to, you know, sell it. We'll add it to this, we'll make a vegetable stock, and then all of a sudden we turn it into something that we can actually sell to customers. Um, it's a good way to use up kind of leftovers in the fridge. So um, to this, I'm actually going to add some just leftover mushrooms that we have from downstairs, just so we have a little bit of depth of flavor. Um, mushrooms are great for that, you know, just adding that rich kind of meaty flavor to something. So we'll just add a couple of those. What, uh Cheese rinds, uh, cheese rinds, parmesan, gran padano, pecorino. I mean, even if you have some, you know, hard cheddar. Um, cheese is just the, the other end of the, you know, not the other end of the equation, but another part of the equation of building depth of flavor. You know, which is everything that we do in a restaurant is is a, a built around how do we get the most flavor out of this little bit as we can. You know, so. The cheese rinds, and then I just have some leftover tubatini from downstairs. Um, and I'll just add some pasta. So now I'm not going to cook this with the intent of taking the pasta out later. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to extract all that starch out of the pasta into my broth. Um, if you've bought canned canned chicken broth from the store, and then you've bought uh, the boxed broth, the ch you know stock from the store, you'll notice a little bit of body between difference between the two of them, you know, there's a little bit of thickness difference. Then if you've actually made chicken stock at home, you see an even more significant difference in the body. And all that does is that adds mouthfeel, texture, and all those things that, you know, maybe if you've made chicken soup at home, and you know, I'm sure it was good, but then you go to a restaurant and you have chicken soup there, significantly different, you know, and, and what that comes from is it comes from the gelatin that we've extracted from the bones to create that that body in the chicken stock. We're trying to, we're trying to simulate that here without using any meat. So we're going to cook this pasta until it just basically falls apart. We're not going to eat it. We're not going to. It's just we're just trying to get that starchiness out of it. So, all right. So the next thing after that on a sheet tray, 
and I have a layer of salt in the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to poke holes in these potatoes, and then we're actually going to bake them on a layer of salt. And the reason that we do that is everything that we do in the next hour with these potatoes is going to be about extracting moisture from the potatoes. Usually in cooking, you're doing everything that you can to keep moisture in. In this case, we're actually trying to get, all, get rid of all the water. What getting rid of all the water does makes a lighter dough because you have to use less flour to bring the dough together. Um, the reason a lighter dough is desirable is if you don't, you don't want gummy, chewy gnocchi. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to make gnocchi at home or you've maybe gone to a restaurant that the gnocchi wasn't very good. Nine times out of ten, the reason it wasn't very good is because they didn't get rid of all the water. They made gummy gnocchi. So we're just going to prick holes in these potatoes, kind of like uh, we're making baked potatoes at home. Um, and then we're just going to bake them, and then we'll go from there. So that's that. We'll come back to that project in a little bit. Where's the salt? Better not be getting anybody up here to take pictures of me. I don't want that. <laughs> You're going to be all over YouTube. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we need a good blooper. So, can you talk about layering, especially salt and sure. salt and layers? I guess every time that I'm working, you know, trying to build the different layers, I'm always really concerned about how much salt should you actually add. To I just not do. I just. It I just. And make it to where it's completely unforgiving by the time. Uh, just a little bit of time. Little pinch here and there. Okay. Once again, salt will pull moisture out. You know, so what I'm trying to do with these vegetables is I'm trying to get the vegetables to release some of their vegetableiness <laughs> <laughs> and, and, into the pot, and, yeah. and you know, just all kind of come together. Okay. As opposed to waiting to the end where you've missed out on that chance to get that vegetableiness out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just, you know, just a little, little at a time. Yeah, just a little pinch at a time. A little pinch at a time. But the goal being, at the end of the dish, you don't have to season. You, you want to taste. You may have to season a little bit, mm -hmm. but you're not dumping in a cup of salt at the end. Thank you. So I'm just gonna start sweating these. And if you all want to step up here, that's completely fine. <clears throat> And watch as I go along, but I'm sure you can see in the mirror. So. Is this a good camera angle for my <laughs> You're off camera. You know, if you'd like your gnocchi a little bit heavier, maybe add more flour to it. If you like it lighter, you add less flour. You can leave the lemon out. You can leave the salt out. You can add more salt. You can, I mean, they, you can make these recipes your own. So, we're going to start with the cheese. Three egg yolks. So I don't know how you separate eggs at home, but I just use my hands. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Or you can get one of those cool egg separators. Don't do that. <laughs> Unless you buy it from Catherine for 10% off. There you go. <laughs> we don't sell them. You don't sell egg separators? <laughs> I tried, Catherine. Oh, no. I can sell them a $300 knife, though. Three hundred dollar knife would be nice. So, has anybody ever have you made pasta before? I mean, have you tried to make your own spaghetti or linguine or stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Not very successful. Not very successfully. <laughs> Only because I took a class here. <laughs> um, you know, when you're making your own pasta, one of the keys is not overworking the dough. Um, it's going to be the same case with, all, with both of these gnocchis. More so the potato than, than the Parisian. Uh, potato tends to get real sticky and gummy when you overwork it. So we've added, we've added the cheese, we've added the egg. Now, something that I do a lot and people sometimes, you know, a lot of people look at me a little bit funny for, but you'll understand why at the end when you taste it. I like the zest lemon in. I use, you know, like I said before, I use a lot of, I probably go through 
at least 100 